I wanted to consider a problem with a Carnot map with what are called don't care values. So I'm going to use as an example, a seven segment display representing a number between zero and nine. So imagine sort of some scoreboard. And so you have these uh, seven segments, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G going sort of around the perimeter and then across it. Then we can create from that the uh, numbers zero through nine. And then we can imagine a truth table where we have inputs corresponding to the, the binary numbers zero through nine. So there are 10 of them and we need uh, four bits to do that. So I've labeled them W, X, Y, and Z where we can think of W as the eights place, X as the fours place, Y as the twos place, Z as the ones place. And then we have, we light up different uh, segments. And so I'm gonna look at the B segment. And so B is, not lit up for a five and not lit up for a six, but otherwise for zero, one, and three, and four, and uh, seven, eight, nine, for all those, it's lit up. So here is the, the output, the desired output lit up or not lit up for B. And there are like sort of seven different truth tables here. We're going to focus on the B. So the first uh, goal is in doing a Carnot map is to put the desired outputs in from this sort of numerically ordered counting order uh, truth table into the gray coded uh, order. And so in gray code, it has this property where as you go from one row to the next, only one bit changes. So you go from zero to zero to zero one, from zero one to one one, and from one one to one zero, only one bit changing at the time. And the YZ outputs do the similar thing going across the top. And what turns out is these first four, I'm gonna give them a different color, say blue, they end up going across here. And so, it is one, one, and then one, and one. It turns out they're all ones, but the order sort of changes. So uh, it's, so here is uh, row, the, the row where the input is three is here, because that's zero, zero, one, one, that's three. But with them all being ones, it didn't, didn't matter so much, but just to point out. Let's look here at some sort of, uh, orange and they're going to go here and it's one zero zero one so it's one zero and we skip and then come back so that last one corresponded to the input of seven zero one 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 so zero one 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 was here and then these last two which I'll make, I don't know, a green. They're going to go here. And they're both ones, one and one. Okay. So now a normal truth table with four inputs usually has two to the four or 16 uh, outputs for all the possible inputs. And but we're not interested in this case in all the possible inputs. We're only interested in the inputs from zero to nine. That's all we're going to put into this system. And so we have sort of six values that don't have outputs. And we can make the outputs whatever we want. And these are what we're calling the, the don't cares. That we don't care what they are. We'll and we're gonna choose them to be what we want. Okay. So now we're going to take the ones that are there, put them in a, a block, a, a rectangular shape of ones of size one, two, four, or eight, some power of two. And we're going to use our don't care values to make these groups larger. Again, they have to be one, two, four, six. So it won't be, won't do us any good to turn a group of four into a group of six, for instance. We need it to be. A, a power of two. Now the power of the, the size six can actually be two overlapping fours. So um, it doesn't hurt to, if you see a six, uh, a lot of simplification is going to happen, but not um, 
again, so when we're adding ones, we want to add them such that we get uh, those powers of two. And then if we decide later on, we want to increase it more, we, we will, but um, that is our, our goal here. Uh, blocks, powers of two, and then we must also remember this wrapping property. Then it's, this is about what is next to each other or what is different by only one bit. And so the last row, W and Z are zero and zero, and the, the first row is zero, zero, and the last row is one, zero. So they are also only different by one bit. So we can imagine in this game of uh, sort of the first row and the last row, if we just wrap it, them being next to each other. And the same thing with the columns, that this first column and this last column can be thought of as next to each other. So let's start off. We have a nice grouping of ones right here, four ones going across the top. That's rectangular shape, it's a power of two, all is good. But we always ask the question, can we do better? Can it be, can the four be an eight? And the answer to that question in this case is yes, because of the wrapping property, we can think of this first row as being next to this bottom row. And the bottom row also has these two green ones, but these two blank ones, we're allowed to put in what we want. So I'm going to put in ones in there. I'm going to sort of mark them as red, that they were, those were my choices. And now I have this, my first group I want to consider in for segment B is going to be the first and last rows with all columns. Okay. So once I've identified a group, then I turn my attention to the inputs that sort of form that group. And so that's, again, the first and last rows and all columns. And then I ask of the inputs, which ones change and which ones stay the same. So the W going from the first row to the last row, the W changed from zero to one, it changed. And so I throw it out. That's what's factored. Those are the things I'm looking for to factor out, to simplify. So the W is going to come out of this expression for this particular block, the first and last row, all columns. The X uh, is was zero on the top and zero on the bottom. So that stays and what stays we have to keep. So X and since X was a zero in the first and last row, we prime it. Then uh, as we go consider Y and Z, we go across columns and we have all the columns. So Y was a zero and then became one. And so it changed and we throw it away and Z was zero and became a one and then uh, stayed one, but it became zero again. And so it's changed. It was half the time zero, half the time one thrown out. So that group is now accounted for. It's just X prime. And I'm just going to put some little indicator that I've dealt with them. So then I don't have to worry about them anymore. And so I still have two ones that I haven't dealt with. I'm going to pick this one right now and put that one in a group. And I can see that it can match up with the one above it. The ones are allowed to be in more than one group. So I have this pair right here. I always ask the question, can I do better? Can I move horizontally? No, I bump into the zero. Can I wrap horizontally? No, I bump into the zero. But can I extend uh, vertically? Yes, I can because I have this blank spot, which I'm allowed to put a one in, so I will. Again, make that red is indicate that it was my choice. And I have this first column. I can't go to, I can't extend it to the second column because of the zero. I can't wrap it to this column because of the zero. But I have this group of four, which is the uh, all rows and the first column. Now, when I had a group of eight, I lost three inputs and kept one. This time it's a group of four. And so I'm going to lose two, input, two inputs and keep two. So here we go again. Once we've identified the group, then we turn our attention to the inputs for that group and see who changes and who stays the same. So it's all rows. And as we go through all the rows, W changed. It started off at zero and became a one. 
the x changes. It was zero and became a one, and then the one became a zero. It changed. That's what factors out. That's what goes away. That's what simplifies. Uh, now we're in the first column, and y doesn't have a chance to change. Y changes as we move from column to column, but we're not moving to column to column. We only have the first column, and so y is zero. Same thing for z. Z is zero, and so we have to keep them both and prime them both because they were zeros. And now I'm going to indicate that that was an x and that was an x that they're taken care of. So now I have one, one remaining to take care of. And so I want to put it into a block. And so I see then it can pair up with the one above it. And then, uh, but I always ask the question, can I do better? And I can't move to the left and I I can't move to the left and I can't move to the right, but I can move vertically down and make this a one. Again, red to indicate that it's my choice. And so this time I have all rows. And the third column. And that's going to be, once I've identified the block, I put my attention over to the inputs. See who changes, who stays the same. W changes, 0, 0, 1, 1, that's changing. X, 0, 1, 1, 0, that's changing. And then I here have the Y and the Z. Now, I only have the one column, so they're not. A, there's no chance for them to change. And they are both one, so both unprimed. So, and then I mark those as taken care of. And then I for these last two don't care values, I don't want to introduce, I've taken care of everything I have to take care of. I don't want to make any new groups that would complicate my expression. So I'm going to make them zeros. And then I put my pieces together. So I have X prime plus Y prime Z prime, plus y, z, and that would be my final simplified expression. I can't do anything with these two y, z terms because two things change. It becomes y prime is y and z prime is z. So if two things change, there's no simplification to be found there. So this is my simplified expression. That's all I wanted to share with you today.